Welcome to Wake Up Call. I'm your host, Melody Brooke. Every day we will bring you guests that will wake you up to a new reality. So Janae, I know that you've been through some things that, that have really brought you to this uh, place in your life where you're actually finding some real success, but you've really struggled. So can you talk a little bit about your struggle? Yeah, I think um, you know, pretty much all of my life my struggle was with identity. Who was I? And I found that I had all of these really creative, crazy talents, and I didn't really know how to channel them, and my parents didn't know what to do with me, so I began acting out inappropriately. What, one of the things that I remember that, Janae, you told me was that when you were, what, four years old, that you, the only thing you wanted for Christmas was a microphone? <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, I've had these dreams for a long time. Yeah. But, but things haven't always been easy for you, have they? No, I really took, um, at the time, I think I was wanting that microphone to make me. I didn't feel good enough about myself just as I was, and so I would make up things, and I'm not proud of this, but I've learned to kind of work through it to realize that, you know, um, I believe God gave me those talents for a reason, and so now it's using them for positive purposes, for other people, not for myself, and so it's just been a real awakening. One of the things that I know that you've struggled with is that you've had some problems with eating. Mm -hmm. So would you be? I have to had talk problems with eating. I didn't that? do it for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, from an early age, I was kind of this little chunk, and um, in fact, I was called kind of hard to imagine her like that now. <laughs> <laughs> but I was called Chunky Monkey, and uh, my mom would pack me cottage cheese and peaches in my lunch pail. And the kids made fun of me. And one day that cottage cheese container broke and a girl started snorting and saying, what's the pig gonna eat since she doesn't have her pig food? And that began um, a battle of about 15, 20 years with anorexia and in the hospital, feeding tubes, lung collapsed, wow. all that. Mm -hmm. I don't think people realize, you know, because I'm sure that most of your friends and, and family probably didn't even realize how bad off you were. Yeah, we were talking about it the other day because um, I, I told my parents, you know, now that I'm on this side of it, and I said, why didn't you intervene? And, you know, they said, well, one, um, there wasn't a whole lot of knowledge about it. And when we asked you if you were okay and you said you were, we trusted you, you know. And then the second thing is I think that particularly when you're on the anorexic side, that's kind of a cool disease to have. Unfortunately, in Hollywood. Well, absolutely, because mm -hmm. because what I've heard is that, you know, if you're going to be successful in Hollywood, you have to always be hungry. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you have to always be underweight. Mm -hmm. And for you, that became your positive feedback, didn't it? Right. Yeah, that really became kind of my um, obsession. And then also the more people that they talked about my weight, then that was also feeding my attention. Um, my need for attention, so it was just so it kind, kind of, of spiraled mm -hmm. out of control. And mm -hmm. and for you, I can only imagine the kind of despair that you must have been in by the time it really hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about me hitting rock bottom is, you know, people said, uh, so you were in the hospital, you were on a feeding tube, you hit rock bottom, and that was not my rock bottom because really? I got out of the hospital and kept going. Um, but my rock bottom was when I was speaking to a group of high school girls, underprivileged, and I found out that two of them had been date raped and how I found that out was by me sharing my story of being molested at an early age and that was kind of my rock bottom when for the first time I wanted out of this pit and out of this and I felt like there was a reason for my life. So how much of your eating disorder do you think was related to the fact that you were molested as, an early, as a young child? You know, I think one of the things that I have found is it all works together. Um, I was molested at the age of five is when it began, and I began covering up for that. I'm so sorry, Janelle. You know, it's, it is, you know, now I have a message that I can send to other parents, to other women, girls, but, you know, I do think that that was all kind of close, re closely related, and now that I can look back and go, that wasn't my fault, and, um, you know, I can kind of channel all of that covering up into good ways and good things and encouraging women to take off the mask that you don't have to cover up. And it's something that you wouldn't have had to give had you not been through that experience. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so I guess that's part of the lesson here, isn't it? Is mm -hmm. that whatever you've been through, it can bring you to a place of being able to have a completely different perspective on your life and, and do things differently because of your past. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have found uh, one of the things with the nonprofit side of my business is uh, with Hope Help Heal is we encourage women to shamelessly share their struggles to help others because I believe that we're all 
hurting. Um, many of us don't want to admit it, and it's maybe not we're all hurting to the same extent, but when we share those hurts, we can actually help others, and we can actually bring hope. Yes, that's one of the things I've always done, is been very open about my own abusive childhood, mm -hmm. too. So it's, it's something I think that when we are more open about it, then it, it relieves, relieves some of the shame mm -hmm. that so many of us carry. And, and it, 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 because it wasn't your fault mm -hmm. that that happened to you. It wasn't my fault that those things happened to me. And, and being able to speak about it on a public forum, it takes a lot of courage, but yet it kind of changes everything in, inside, doesn't it? Yeah, and I've just, um, I think for me, it's remembering that it's not about me. It's about me making a difference. And, um, you know, if I can just help one person, then it's worth it for me to share my story. So when you hit rock bottom, mm -hmm. how, did, how did you get from there to here? Um, well, I, that day, I went home and I got down on my knees and I was like, okay, God, you must have a plan. Um, so how do you save me? And when you've been struggling with an addiction like that for so long, um, how do you stop those behaviors? And then also I had been dishonest about a number of things. And so my first year in this journey was really about going back, making amends, learning new healthy ways to have feelings and to <laughs> deal with feelings, which was a whole new thing. Yeah. And then, you know, and I had done motivational speaking and I realized I was telling everybody else to pursue their passion and I wasn't you pursuing doing mine. <laughs> uh, but the funny thing is I think so often we think we're limited by our knowledge, meaning I hadn't done TV production before, I couldn't do that. Well, we shot a little promo for a show and um, we got picked up by American Life Network. And so I think it's just believing in yourself, believing in your heart and your dreams and, and going for it. And I think that's absolutely 100% right. And, but it's so hard for people to, to make that shift into, because you had to have hated yourself at some point in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to treat yourself that way, I think you have to really, even if you're not admitting it openly, in fact, most of the time people aren't, right. but that you carry this sort of deep down hatred for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that when you can transform that, and, and it sounds like that's what happened to you, mm -hmm. that a spiritual healing of your right. spirit. Absolutely. And, and so when that happened, you were able then to care enough about yourself mm -hmm. to pursue the things that mattered to you. And when, when you can do that, it's huge, isn't it? It's huge, and I, I would just encourage, the one thing I say is, you know, so often we have these dreams, but we don't have the money, we don't have the resources, we don't, who cares? I mean, seriously, if you knew the way we shot our first season on the show. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know some of that, yes. Yes, yes, I, you know, I mean, it was totally, uh, I joke that I'm a ghetto girl, but we really were, but, you know, we were just making things happen to the best that we could, and um, it's just amazing kind of what happened with that. And so, so to talk a little bit about, I mean, your show is, is very unique because it, because it takes everything that you've been through and kind of brings it into mm -hmm. this forum mm -hmm. that, that really shares with the world your heart. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we've, our first show is Tour of Giving, where we highlight people making a difference giving. Very sweet, very nice, makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. But the show that we're working on now is called Revelations of an Authentic Woman, also known as Raw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's what we call a documentary, so I do very similar to this, but then I send the women out with a little uh, video camera and ask them to do video journals. And then I'll look at them and then have conversations about what I saw from an outsider perspective. So, you know, often here's what we say we're about, but what do we show ourselves mm -hmm. to be about? So it's Isn't been lots of truth? fun. You know, and, and I say to my clients, because you know I'm a counselor, so I have clients that, and I'll say to them, you can't judge your inside against other people's outside, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when you do that, you, you know, it's, you're never gonna know what the other person's inside is. You, right. You're missing the whole point. Right. Because we all have a public face that mm -hmm. we put on, mm -hmm. and we all have our inner side that we share only with those people closest to ourselves, and maybe even just with ourselves. Well, and what's been fun about this, Melody, you mentioned that you're a counselor, and I am not, mm -hmm. and I don't play one on TV. <laughs> I leave it to you guys as the professionals. But it's more just like, what can we do as friends? You know, because how often do we see our friends doing crazy things? And you don't know what to say or how to help. Right. right. So I'm hoping yes. that by showing them, look, I'm just kind of like my pal, sitting down with them on a couch and handing them a video camera. But it's really been fascinating so far. And, and so <laughs> the people that, are, that you have on your show, are, they, are these celebrities? Are these well-known people? Are these everyday people? Who are they? Uh, yeah, most of them are everyday people. You know, we've got a, a couple of people that are kind of up-and-coming celebrities that are fun to watch. But for the most part, it's just everyday, you know, kind of upper-middle-class women who think they have it all together. 
you know, I've, I've seen you through a lot of the yes. struggle that you've had over the last several years, and, yep. and seeing you now, you know, even as you talk more about this show, you know, I was, I was around when you were doing the Tour of Giving show, mm -hmm. but seeing you talk about this, there's so much more passion in your eyes when you talk about that. So clearly you found your voice with this show. I have, and I just, I believe the more that we can, um, you know, women, we're not the competition, and we're not the enemies. But so often we're working against each other, not together, not for each other. So my intention is by showing women, working to help women in a true and authentic, raw authentic way, uh, <laughs> it'll be pretty interesting. So. Well, thank you so much for being here, thanks and thanks for, for the work me. you do. And thanks for all you're doing. You definitely are waking people up to a better, oh, brighter way. <laughs> I so, hope so. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.